Welcome to today's tutorial for Excel, and we'll be looking at doing conditional formatting. I'm your host, Eddie Lowe, so let's look at our agenda. So we'll be looking at the types of conditional formatting that are already pre-made into Excel, creating our own rules, managing the rules that we've created for conditional formatting, deleting those rules, uh, creating multiple rules at the same time, and some of the common issues that uh, people encounter when they are uh, doing conditional formatting. So let's move on over to Excel. So here we are in Microsoft Excel looking at a list of data that we've been given and we want to quickly highlight key pieces of that data without manually looking at in each individual piece. And the tool that we're going to use is called conditional formatting. Conditional formatting can be found here on the Home tab and it's over here in the Styles Toolkit and it's right here in our screen. So let's look at some of the information that is contained here in the tool. So if we click and do a drop down, we can see that we have highlight sales rules, top and bottom rules, data bars. So let's go through some of these. So for instance, let's look at uh, the greater than tool that's already inside of our toolkit. So if we just go ahead and highlight this and click OK, and you know we do uh, format sales that are greater than uh, 20,000 and we click OK and you see over here on our project number all it does is it highlights that and it really did nothing with our data so let's uh, go back and look at this again and what we need to do is we need to highlight information that or the range that we want the conditional formatting to be applied to so let's highlight here in uh, column f under our profits and highlight this all the way down come back to our conditional formatting highlight rules greater than and this time it automatically puts in a population number which happens to be the average of the or a little below the average of the information so if we come in now and we tell it that we want to do uh, highlight information over 15,000 it goes in and it highlights those cells um, the default here is a sort of pinkish light red feel with the dark red text we can change that if we want by coming over doing a drop down and you see it has several preset type values or if we want, we can do a custom format. So let's look at that. Do a custom format. And what we find here is that with our formatting our sales, we can format the feel that goes into it. So let's uh, make this maybe orange. Then come over to our border and we could apply a border if we wanted to make it say red and we wanted a complete outline we can change the font maybe we want to make it bold and we could change the number style format uh, to make it uh, maybe we want it as accounting format with uh, the dollar symbol whenever the condition applies so when we do that now we see that we have all of those cells that meet the criteria have been highlighted all right, so let's cancel out of that and let's look at the next one that was uh, through here. Uh, and we can see that we have less thans, betweens, and a very helpful one is duplicate values. So if we click the duplicate values, we can see that uh, we have it highlighted to where the same values in the sale. This could be really helpful if you've got a list of uh, data that you have sorted by one cell, but you want to eliminate any kind of other uh, duplicates and you want to find those pieces of information, you can come in and do conditional formatting to find those so let's cancel out of that all right so next on our conditional formatting uh, we have top to bottom rules so we could come in and tell it to highlight the top 10 items inside of our range it does that again we can change the formatting of those we'll cancel that out uh, come back down we've got 
uh, data bars. So for instance, uh, it'll come in and it will do uh, a sort of a bar graph inside of the cells depending upon the value with the highest ones being more of a full bar and our lowest values to include negatives being uh, just a very tiny bar. So let's clear out this profit uh, conditional formatting and we can do that by coming up hitting conditional formatting scroll down to clear rules and we could clear from selected sales or from the entire sheet so let's clear from the entire sheet uh, let's uh, highlight again and work our way down to uh, these color scales and what the color scales do is depending upon ranges it will uh, do a various color scheme that you can choose inside of these charts. Similar to that, you also have icon sets. So for the icon sets, uh, let's highlight the margins here and do the conditional formatting, do the icon sets, and we can do these three triangles. Now this does it in accordance to a specific scheme such as the top 66% and the lower 33% and the middle 33% are different icons and let's uh, make this more specific to what we want the uh, formatting to look like with those icons so we've created our rule now we can come down to manage rules and under the manage rules you can see well uh, we have any rules that have been listed so let's highlight the icon set and you can see here's the format and here's the range that it applies to so let's edit this rule and we can see that there's different types of rules we've already selected this uh, in our shortcuts that we had and we can come in and say okay when the value is and there's that 67 percentile but when we're looking at the margin here the reason I selected this is because these are in percents, but you can see that we have green arrows on items that are greater than 67%. So it's not the actual number itself greater than 67%. It's 67% of the data. So let's change this to a number and this to a number. And let's say everything that is greater than a 20%, which would be 0 0.20 in decimal form, is going to be our green arrow. And everything that is in the middle uh, from this number up to the uh, 20%. So let's say that it is 0.15 percent or 0.15 decimal or 15 percent so anything that is between these numbers will be a dash versus a down arrow will be less than so we can click OK and we can click apply and we can see that now our data has changed to our specific criteria that we had uh, we can also delete rules by clicking here in our rules manager highlighting the rule that we want and delete that rule and say okay so now that rule is gone so now we've looked at all of the preset types of rules let's look at uh, really where we can make our own impact by creating our own new rule so we will come in and do that and one of the most common ways of using uh, your own rule is to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now this is going to have a very specific syntax and this is where a lot of uh, people have problems when they're first learning how to use conditional formatting that uh, it just doesn't make sense to them. So while we have our data highlighted here let's say that we want uh, anything that is less than 18% to be highlighted. So if we come in now and we tell it um, less than 0.18 and come over and click our format and just choose a normal uh, just a fill here select anything click OK we don't get anything that's how some folks think that the conditional formatting 
works, but it is actually a formatting. So let's clear out any rules, or let's actually look at that rule. So if we come in and do a manage, we can see now that the formula that that rule applied was a, a text. So it puts this equal sign inside of the formula, and that's part of the syntax. So what we want to do when we're creating a rule is always start with the equal sign. So we click equal, and then we want to use the first uh, cell of the range to be evaluated. So for in this case, uh, we want G2, that's the first item that has been highlighted, and we say G2, and now we do our operation that we operand that we want to evaluate against. So again, less than, uh, 0.15 and come in and we've got our formatting so we click OK and we say OK apply that rule and now what you see is that all of the information that is less than that 15% has been highlighted so make sure that you have that equal sign in there. Even if you put the column row, it's going to interpret it as text and it's going to put it inside of apostrophes. So let's get rid of this rule for a moment. Uh, delete the rule. And let me show you why I said uh, that we needed in the syntax for it to be the first cell of the range to be evaluated. So what we're going to do is we're going to look again here on maybe our profit and we have this information and we want it to highlight our project number. So we can do that by coming in and saying on our, uh, let's, our project number, Let's highlight that, hit conditional formatting, create a rule, or new rule here, use our formula, and say that we want it to be equal to our profit F2 is less than, let's say, $10,000. Click our format, change it to red, and say, OK. And when we do that, now we can highlight a different column, uh, those particular cells that meet the rule by uh, evaluating the profit. So that's how we can manage to do that. Okay, so what if we want to highlight the entire row of data that when we uh, against a certain criteria. So let's go back in, hit our conditional formatting, clear our rules, clear from the entire sheet, and we will highlight this entire data set. So we'll want to again evaluate on our profit, come up, hit conditional formatting, and we will want to now create a new rule, a formula, and we want it to where it is equal to, again, that profit, F2, which is the first data or the first point inside of our range, is less than that $10,000 in format. Now I want you to pay a particular close attention to how I wrote this. F2 is less than 10,000 and I click OK. You see here our project numbers where our criteria has been met. It's, uh, it highlights correctly, but what happens is that since we put just an F inside of our formula, it now goes in and each one of these cells columns to the right is what gets evaluated against the column cell to the next right. So think of it that way. if you're auto filling a formula in Excel and you don't use a, an absolute reference in there. So let's look back at our conditional formatting. Let's manage the rule that we just wrote. Again, we've got that F2. Let's edit our rule. And what we want to do now is create, uh, put a dollar sign in front of the F. I'm going to warn you on this right here as well. Say, for instance, I click between the F and the 2, and I need to put my dollar sign in front of the F. We do not want to hit our left arrow. As you can see, with our left arrow, it has now went in and added F plus dollar sign A dollar sign 3. 
that we do not want. So we always want to have, make sure that if we didn't put it there in front of the F, that we either click and put it there or we can uh, backspace and then we can hit dollar F. That locks in that column. If we were to lock it in against two, then all of the cells would be locked in against that one cell. So we just want to lock in the column. Now if we click OK and apply, we can see that our cells uh, highlighted the entire row across our data table. So that's another common error that I see is not putting in that dollar sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep this row in here and let's uh, add multiple rows into our data that we want to format. So let's uh, highlight all of our uh, data table again because that's what we want to apply it to. We can do a conditional formatting. Let's add a new rule. Again, we want to use a formula. And this time, let's go against the margin and say it's equal to, remember our dollar sign, G2. And let's say that we want to highlight cells that are less than, uh, let's say, 15 percent or our 0.15 in our decimal and let's format this time in orange click OK OK and now our data has been formatted to where our profit and our margins have been highlighted now one of the things to pay attention to when we do this going back into our conditional formatting manage the rules is the way that our rules are applied so our first rule is always going to be applied and then consider this as an and statement and any value that is less than 10,000 will then be highlighted. So if we were to highlight this formula, move it to the top, apply, and you can see now that the formatting has changed. So make sure that if your rules don't seem to be applying correctly, it may be the order that they are in. So go to your rules manager, highlight, move the rule, apply, and click OK. So that's something that you can look at to make sure when you're troubleshooting, why aren't your rules working? OK, now we can also add uh, another rule in here that highlights only inside of a column in addition to what we have. So if we add our conditional formatting rule, uh, formula and we say that we want this to equal our formula equals G to our first column is uh, greater than point uh, one uh, eight and we can do a format say that we want that to be green we hit OK and boom, now we have additional formatting. Again, it's going to apply those rules as an AND. So just be aware that the way that the conditional formatting applies, then you can uh, have it in the wrong order, which your formatting might not be exactly how you want it to be. Now, the last thing I want to show you is another common mistake that we see, and let's clear our rules from our entire sheet. So let's highlight our row from F1 to 30, and we come in and we do a conditional formatting. We add a new rule. We use a formula and we say, again, we want to evaluate it from our G2 is less than a 0 0.15 and we want to format that as an orange and we click OK, we click OK. And now you can see that uh, our values aren't exactly in the right place that we would expect them to do because 34.5% is not less than 15%. And the reason that we have this uh, shift in our highlighting cells, if we look back here at our role, oh, 
That's, and if you don't have the entire selection and you don't see the rule here, you can come up to show formatting rules for current selection. You can do it for this entire worksheet. And now we would see the rule. We can click here and we can see that uh, when we edit, we've chose G2, but if you remember, that uh, when we did this, we're applying to G1 through G30. So to get to do that, we want to now highlight and change this to two. And if we apply, and then we need to change our formula, edit the rule again, G2, and say, OK apply now it shifts correctly and the reason for that is that we had included a another cell inside of our range but we didn't choose the first cell to be evaluated inside of our range it should have been margin if it was g1 so that's what we want so at the top cell of what you have highlighted should be what you put into your formula so we will close this out and uh, this concludes our presentation on conditional formatting and i hope this added uh, a little bit of clarity to adding that special formatting to your uh, data sheets. Thank you for attending today's presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for additional content, please comment below. I'd also ask you to like, share, and subscribe this video and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos have been posted. Again, thank you very much.